in the next uh, 20 minutes to 30 minutes or so, I'm just going to tell you a, a number of stories. And really, it's about from the idea uh, through innovation, through scale, and then running through the whole thing, uh, impact. Um, I'm just back from Mexico. We have the Homeless World Cup uh, every year. And um, it just finished less than, less than two weeks ago. And it was our 10th one we did, and it was sensational. It was the best one, the biggest one, and one which is, I think we're all still recovering from, because it kind of gets you right in the center of your soul. So 168,000 people turned up to watch, 60 homeless teams from around the world, television crews from everywhere, uh, live web cams, etc., and people changing their lives um, it, at that precise time and uh, subsequently. So, a uh, sensational moment for us, and it was almost, as you'll probably see, I'll tell the story, kind of, we're beginning to break through uh, on this issue of homelessness in some parts of the world, so we're, we're, we're very happy. Um, but l let me start where uh, uh, the reason why I do what we do and our team does what we do. It's, it's this, and this, these are just a few pictures of people, uh, the stereotypical view of homeless people around the world. And these pictures are taken from any city in the world now. So there's homelessness in every country, um, from the richest to the poorest. The USA has three and a half million people on the streets, they say. It's, it's uh, a, a huge uh, problem. Uh, and these are some from Japan and the US. It doesn't matter. You see these pictures everywhere, and I'm sure you've seen these people. And what we want to do is to, is to create a change. But when you come up with figures like there's 100 million homeless people or you know, a billion people living in death less than a dollar a day, it, the human brain, brain, I think, can't really take it. What can you do about 100 million people uh, homeless? It, it, it's just beyond comprehension. So what my attitude really is, is you start with one person <coughs> Um, and, and start to create the, the change that way. And if we all did that, then, then you create a, a substantial change. Um, so we, we, we take the people from the stereotypical view and turn them into, into uh, footballers and subsequently change their lives. And so the, here's the story. What well, wasn't a bar in, in, in Edinburgh, actually. It was in Cape Town. So this, this is the story of how we started. So this is the idea bit, okay? So I, I was involved in street papers um, with a big issue in Scotland, and we'd helped uh, develop uh, and start other street papers around the world. And we'd created a trade association called the International Network of Street Papers, which was able to meet once a year. Only had very little money, but was able to meet once a year. And in 2001, we were in Cape Town, and it was a great conference, really, really sitting up till three in the morning, talking about how we're going to support one another and change the world. And after the conference, in the last evening, myself and a guy called Harold Schmidt uh, from Austria were sitting in a bar and we said, this is a great conference, the only problem is there's no homeless people here. How could, how could we get them involved in what we're experiencing, this international inspiration? And we came up with various ideas, but then ran into all sorts of problems, you know, visa laws, employment laws, and, and indeed language. And we said, aha, but there is an international language which is called football or soccer to those of you from other parts of the world, but in this country we call it football. Um, and it's, it's, it's just a ball, and, and both of us really were into football. We, we, we liked it. I liked it. He played a bit, so I, I didn't, but you know, we, we got it. And we thought, actually, if we could involve our homeless people in playing football, it would be a positive thing. So I uh, uh, come from Scotland, and um, I said, look, there's some of our newspaper sellers who kick a ball around who would claim to be a, 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 a team, and maybe we could make them into Scotland. And Harold said, oh, we have the same in Austria. So we shook hands and we said, there's going to be this game between Scotland and Austria. And I said, Scotland will win, because we never win at football at any level, but we'll definitely beat you guys. And he said, Austria, we don't win either, but we'll definitely beat you guys. So we shook hands over the beer, and then we drank some more beer. And by the end of the night, we'd, we'd invented the Homeless World Cup, where not only Scotland and Austria were coming, everybody was coming. That was the idea. The innovation kind of starts the next morning because you know you have these conversations sometimes and they just stay in the bar and are good fun and they just stay there. So we said, that was a great conversation last night. Will we do it? We went, yeah, let's do that. So over the next uh, 18 months, um, we worked together and we had the first Homeless World Cup in Graz in Austria. Here it is, and 18 countries came. Now what happens very quickly is that 
In the year running up to this, uh, our uh, partner projects around the world work with homeless people on the street. And it's a really simple thing to do. Here's a ball. Would you like to come and play football? And people tend to go, yeah, sure. And then we involve them in a the game. And it doesn't really matter what standard you are. So you can be really dreadful, and a lot of our players are, or you can be wonderful, but you can participate. And you can be any age, and you can be male and female, and you can be in any position. We just get you involved in a team and start you, start you training. And then uh, throughout the process, people start to look at the issues that are in front of them, maybe around drugs and alcohol, for example, and um, uh, 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 start to say, hey, I've got this problem. I can't play football if I'm out of my face and so on. So we start to address these issues. And at the end of a year, a team is selected and you, get start to, you come to represent your country. So in the first one, we had 18 countries participating. We play in city centres in, in small squares. So football can be played anywhere. We could have a game here. Actually, it'd be quite good fun, you know, two sides of the room. Um, but you can play anywhere. So we go to where the homeless people were, which is in the, in the city centres. And we usually play in, in the main town square, if you like. We build these arenas. And uh, it's a week-long competition um, where if you lose, you don't go home, you stay. And, and teams find their own level. So some of the teams are very, very good and some of them are terrible. And the terrible ones play against each other and the good ones play against each other. Somebody wins in the end because it's competitive, but then everybody gets a medal. So it's like these mass marathon runs. You participate and, 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 uh, and win and lose, but everybody gets the same medal at the end. So we, 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 had, we were doing this in Graz and it lasts a week. And we, we, we thought it was going to work. Um, uh, and we'd been able to raise some money both in Graz and internationally to get the teams there. But we weren't so sure. Um, but we had three fantastic outcomes. Uh, one was the players changing uh, out of all recognition in front of our eyes. So uh, the day before, they might have been ac across the road in the pictures I showed you before. Now they're playing in, in the national uh, strips of their countries. They're singing the national anthems better than any of the professional players do, identifying with their country much more determined to, 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 to be good. And you could actually see them in this first competition actually growing in front of your eyes, st standing up really proud. And so critical thing that's changing is psychologically, um, because homeless people have low self-esteem, little self-respect, no confidence, and this is, this is coming back into them. So psychologically, big changes are taking place. So, Fundamentally and most importantly, big change amongst the people, the uh, homeless guys. And then the stands are full, you can see. In fact, the, the, there were so many people there, we had to build uh, screens, we had to bring in screens. So now all these people who pre previously, the uh, previous day, had said, keep away from homeless people because they're a bit dangerous and they're unhealthy, and they certainly wouldn't let their children near them. Uh, they're, uh, 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 they're all standing applauding homeless people, the same person. All we've done is change the environment. That's all we've done, just change the environment, what people are wearing. So the stereotypical view is, is changing, and indeed, the same people, children are now running up and they're getting autographs from the players, and the players are becoming these, these uh, uh, heroes on the football pitch, and all of this critical change is happening. So a huge change in the people who are watching. And then thirdly, the world's media turned up, which we really didn't expect. Banks of television cameras, uh, even some countries that weren't participating, uh, 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 all portraying homeless people in a positive way. And normally the media towards homeless people is negative. Get, get these people off the streets because they're dangerous, they're upset the tourists, they're spending money, oh, I don't know, get rid of them. Extinguish them. Whereas now the media gave a positive response and it wasn't just a majority of uh, um, positive, it was 100%, 100%, not one negative comment at all. So after this, we did some research into what was happening to players, because we were really only going to do one. You know, we'd listened to Pamela's advice and so on, and kind of thought, oh, God, this is really crazy. Maybe we shouldn't be doing this. But we did research, and we, we, start, we found out that 80% of the players had changed their lives completely. So come off drugs, alcohol, got houses, got jobs, gone to college, and we, we didn't believe them. I said, this is not possible. It cannot be 80% because of the, of, of the people we're working with. It's just not work at that level. But we checked and we checked again, we checked about five or six times, and it kept coming back the same. So as a result of that, we just started to innovate and build the organisation. So throughout the year, we work with our partners all over the world, get more countries to become involved, 
and, and build the annual event. So the following year in Gothenburg, now we have uh, 26 teams participating. In Edinburgh in 2005, we have 32 teams participating. It's all based on the same format. People around the world are getting uh, um, more interested. The same impact figures are, are coming out to us. There's these, lots of these become a habit now, this business of uh, players signing autographs, this guy's from Argentina. Uh, then in 2006, we're in Cape Town. We have 48 teams. This is the uh, main square. You'll know in those of you from South Africa down there. And that's the, just behind there's the famous balcony where Mandela made his, uh, his famous speech after he released from prison. And just before this picture was taken, all the homeless players had marched past to come to this opening game. And the president of South Africa and Becky stood in the balcony and saluted them all. So now we've moved from this bar idea to a, a president of one of the biggest countries who's now saluting homeless people as they come down the street. And it was a, a, a step up for us going to South Africa, more African countries involved. Then in, uh, um, Desmond Tutu, of course, comes down. I, I, I always wanted to like showing this picture because he, it was his birthday this day and um, he was supposed to come down for two minutes and, and, and do a little... little 20 to 30 minutes he was on the pitch, couldn't get him off the pitch. <laughs> and he, 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 he's doing, saying to the crowd, you know, follow me, he said, say you are a special person, I am a special person. And everybody's going, I am a special person. He's kicking the ball around and hugging homeless people. Really fantastic. Our sports guys are going crazy, you know, going, where's the scheduling gone? And it was a, a, lovely, a, a lovely moment. He's a great guy, of course, as you know. In 2007, in, we're in Copenhagen. This is a kind of picture of the of the international field, we're still at 48 countries this year, but, but all the players who can't speak the same languages are all together, they're all celebrating together. It's, it's the power of sport, the power of football. And then, I like showing this picture, <laughs> in, especially in England, you know, because Scotland won. So I can say Scotland, I've seen Scotland win the World Cup, you know. It's, it, it, it's amazing, and a lot, a lot of these guys had, at that time, had really serious issues before I knew some of them who had major heroin problems and stuff, so there they, there they were, big change. Um, in Melbourne in 2008, we're in the Federation Square, with thousands of people uh, turning up. Um, Australia really took the Homeless World Cup to its heart, and uh, we had the first Women's World Cup there, which there's the Zambian team that won it, and then uh, we had this special sport moment, because in sport, you know, you can't make things up, it just, just, just happens, I couldn't have made this up, so the final of the Homeless World Cups between Afghanistan and Russia. And um, <laughs> Afghanistan had been coming through the, the stages, n n not as the favorite team, but always just winning, you know? And um, Russia had this, uh, uh, 10 seconds to go, they had this open goal to score to equalize, and they missed, and Afghanistan won, and the place just went bammy, unbelievable. And then the manager of the Afghan team said, that, that, that there's been darkness in my country for 30 years. This is the first time a light went on, and at that point, everybody started crying. So, but it was a, it was a very special moment. Um, then we, in, we're in Milan, and you know, we're attracting uh, people like Lewis Hamilton uh, came down and you know, sporting people, and, and he, he spoke per privately with the players, just the players, and as he was 23, I think, at the time, and he's obviously got a really mature head on his uh, on him because it was really great, we really an interacted well with the players. So these sort of things are happening. We're just growing the whole thing. Ukraine won in 2009. Then in 2010 we were in Brazil, because you have to go to Brazil if you, if you know about football. And then there was two cups there, the men and the women, and Brazil won both of them. <laughs> but uh, it, was on, it was on Cocobana Beach and it was uh, a fabulous, uh, fabulous time. In Paris, uh, uh, last year we were uh, played under the Eiffel Tower a spectacular uh, venue, and Scotland won again, actually, in the men's, and uh, um, uh, the Kenya, Kenya won the women's tournament. And so then, just bringing us back right up to date, um, then we, we were in the Zocalo Square, and this is the opening kind of ceremony, and the, the, the Mexican uh, people really, really took to this. This is what was incredible, what happened here. Um, in terms of the, oh, just the whole passion of the country and the people uh, to make something happen, to understand what we were about. So the impact into, in, into Mexico was substantial uh, prior to the event, but it's phenomenal now. Everybody's talking about it and using sport as a, 
as a tool to create some changes in that country. So here's some pictures. Here's the team from Haiti, which we struggled to get there because, because of, of well, financial issues, but we managed to get them there just, just in the nick of time two weeks before. And as a result, um, just at the end, a business guy came, came for, a Haitian business guy came and said, I'm get, as soon as they come back to Haiti on the Monday, which was 10, 10 days ago, I'm going to give them all a job. So they all got a job, uh, the whole team. So it was complete change. And then we had these fantastic scenes of, that's uh, Mexico playing uh, in, in, the fi in, in the final there. So uh, f for us though, the, the critical thing, that's, that's how we've grown and developed and all the year round work is going on. The critical thing for us is it, there's no point in us doing it and, and me telling you these nice stories because really it's, it's nice unless we are creating an impact. And we continue to make this, this substantial impact and there's something about just pulling, using football in its simplicity and then, and then building on it. So in each of our countries, we have one partner and they work in different ways because homelessness manifests itself differently in different countries in the world. Um, and it, it's incredible the, the, the impact it has. And because it's simple and because it works, uh, we just keep pushing uh, on and do more and more and more and bring more partners to the table. Um, we, we've developed a le leadership pr programs. So one of the, 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 the byproducts that we never expected to come out of this was the, the fact that the players themselves go back and become coaches and then come back again as leaders. And, and they are fantastic because David, for example, runs the entire Scottish uh, uh, street soccer program and he's used to be homeless, got on the team, then went and got his coaching certificates, then came back as a volunteer, then an assistant coach, then the coach, then the man. Now he runs the whole thing. And there's nothing better than somebody coming from the street um, uh, to, to run programs because other people really, really listen to them. And there's another example, Michelle, she plays for Brazil now. And uh, she, she, she's a fantastic footballer, obviously. Um, but as, as, as somebody, as an ambassador for our organisation, she's wonderful because she's going back and talking to young people her own age, telling them to stay out of drug gangs and, and play football and so on. So a lot of our players putting a lot back and becoming fantastic leaders in their communities. We're all over the place now. Um, and we, underneath, it's not just the international event, we have a national event. So this is a picture of the... Uh, uh, Dutch National uh, Homeless Cup and they have cities so you get to be on your neighbourhood team um, then your neighbourhood play to represent your city then the cities go to Amsterdam Square once a year to, to, to win the, the, the Dutch Homeless Cup and then that team becomes Holland that comes to the, comes to the Homeless, homeless uh, World Cup so a whole infrastructure of events that in, involve people has been built up around the world and in Mexico because I'm kind of, uh, I'm still, I don't know, it's only two weeks since we were there and it was such a fantastic experience, I want to talk about Mexico all the time. Um, but, uh, they, I mean, I, if we've got time afterwards, you can ask me about it, but this, how, how we got it to going to scale in Mexico is a, a, a nice little story. But they had, in their, in their trials to this Homeless World Cup, they had 18,500 street kids involved across 32 states in programs getting the kids off the street to play football to come and represent Mexico. So what they've been doing in Mexico over a very short space of time is really quite sensational. And they really get sport and they get the power of sport and they're really taking it to scale. And so these are some of the pictures of the people involved. Of course, we have this uh, all over the world. Um, and um, uh, these are some pictures, different types of pictures from uh, Kenya. And this is where the, Ken this is the Kenyan uh, um, uh, training ground which you might think is kind of ran down and stuff, and it, and it is. But they, 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 they love it. They call it the San Siro, for those of you who know football. You know, that's it. And it is, their, it is their center of dreams. This is it. And they won't let anybody around it to be built. This is their place where they play and they practice. And it's, uh, and it's uh, fabulous. So um, let me just kind of, I want to just finish with, with t making kind of two points and then show you a little video for three minutes of Mexico, of course. But, but, the, but the, critical, the critical thing here is about uh, impact. It's about um, the changes that we can, we can make. And people sometimes ask me about that. So I can talk about different levels of uh, impact, if you like, or different sections of impact. So first of all, 
financially, okay? So some research in New York a few years ago said that it cost uh, $40,000 for somebody to be homeless. So somebody homeless sitting in the street here, the amount of time the police came up to them, uh, the chaos they were involved in, going to prison for a day, da -da, all of that sort of stuff, in a year, cost society $40,000. So if we've got 700 players in our international tournament there, okay, 700 times 40,000 is $20 million. So if we take 700 off the street, we save society using that figure, $28 million, okay? And I was asking somebody just to, so I got this, this figure right. So, but we've been working over the years with 300,000 homeless people, okay? Many of whom have gone off the, off the street. So, 300,000 times 40,000 is $120 billion. So, the, using that figure, and it's a bit rough and ready, okay? But using that figure, we can say we've saved the global society $120 billion. The impact, of course, though, is really around our players. So there's finance, there's players, they've changed their lives completely. So we can do the statistics in terms of the numbers, but it's about their lives. It's about this thousands of anecdotal stories about the players and how they've changed, not become professional footballers, simply got little jobs, changed their lives completely. There's impact in the volunteers. So we have volunteers around our organisation, but certainly at the annual events. So the feedback from the Mexican volunteers, there were a whole number, maybe a lot of students there, they're saying it was the best days of their lives. And the, the learning from the experience was incredible. And so they're going to do certain things. And that was all over Facebook in Mexico. Impact in media. So once again, global media coverage, changing the stereotypical view of homeless people, saying that actually these are human beings and not just kind of people that we should be frightened of is substantial. Impact in terms of corporate understanding. So <coughs> corporates have come to us and connected with us. One of our main sponsors is Nike, for example, would never have come near homelessness if it hadn't been for our intervention in terms of football. And in terms of their staff engagement programs, in terms of their corporate social responsibility and their understanding of homelessness, a really substantial impact. Substantial impacts in terms of government thinking, because governments now start to talk to us about, hey, how can we use sport to intervene in major social issues? Um, and of course, impact amongst everybody. So the public, amongst you. And um, these impacts are substantial because it's changing a view. And my strong view is that homelessness shouldn't exist in the world. So if we all do something, you can create a real change. So impact is really uh, important. Now I just want to tell you a little story about a girl called Anna and I want to show you this picture. Okay? So Anna comes from the north of Mexico. She's 23 now. And um, she was a uh, street kid, parents unemployed. And up in the north of Mexico there's uh, issues with uh, a lot of drugs, as you'll know, become a lawless kind of area. So by the age, very young age, she's involved in gangs. By, another, uh, by the time she's a young teenager, there, she knows everyone's got guns. She knows people who've died as a result of it, been shot. She knows people who've shot them. She lives in that environment. Then the football uh, comes along and she says, I want to get involved in the football. She gets involved in the football and gets selected to play for the women's teams in Mexico. This is a, a great honour for her. And Mexico start to do very well during the week. And then in the quarterfinals, when they're winning a game, she twists her ankle and is very badly injured with torn ligaments. She's carried off the pitch, taken to hospital, and, and she's out of the tournament. Um, and she's devastated. And the rest of the team, who are, who are well focused anyway, become even more focused. So in the next game, she's sitting in the stand and the team all come up to her before the game going, we're going to do this for you, okay? So then she starts to motivate the team, pulling the team together. And um, Mexico win the, win the event uh, and, uh, with, with her. And then they all come over to her. She's the first person they go to. And then 
She goes up, uh, this is a kind of little VIP area that we, we have for corporates. And if you ignore my, me, because I shouldn't be there in that picture really, but we haven't had time to crop me out yet. She's speaking to the first lady of Mexico, okay? So this person has gone there. And this guy over there in the hat is Carlos Slim, who's the richest man in the world. So there's one of the poorest people in the world, the most marginalized. And what we've been able to do is to bring other people together, to take people from one world, from an invisible world, outcast world, and people from another world who maybe didn't know how to react together around football to create change. So her and her colleagues went to dinner with Mr. Slim after that. And then she has now gone back to her place in North Mexico as a hero, telling other kids, let's get out of these gangs and let's start playing football instead, with a bit of corporate backing, to put it mildly. And so substantial change takes place. So that's that little story. It's uh, all about sport and how you can be down one moment and up the next and how you can create change if you keep focused. So I'm going to show you a video of Mexico, which this, and it's, I know you've had a long day. Apologies.
thank you. So it's quite possible if we want, we can do anything we want. We shouldn't have homelessness in the world. Um, if we're enterprising and we use our uh, skills to innovate and change and be impactful, we can change the world. Together we can do that. So um, probably run slightly over time, but thank you very much indeed for your. <laughs>